few months ago, I made a working shotgun in Besiege. This worked well, but it was very slow and prone to jamming. In this video, I wanted to try making a vacuum launcher and using that to make a functional pistol. So starting out in the sandbox here, you can see the first thing I'm doing is putting out a couple of wood blocks. On those, I'm going to be putting out some vacuum blocks, and this is where that vacuum launcher I mentioned is going to come into play. Now, I'd set their power to the absolute max, and you can see already these vacuum blocks have quite a bit of power. Now, this is good, but I don't want to shoot the starting cube, and instead, I want to shoot bombs. So I put a bomb down here, and I tried to give you this a test, and while it did pull it in, I didn't have enough spacing here, so the bomb just ended up hitting them. So spacing them further apart gave it another test here, and it seemed to launch off just fine. So to get more power, my plan here was to add on even more vacuum blocks, and I was hoping the forces would add together. This didn't exactly seem to happen, though, and while it did seem to be a bit better, it didn't really seem to have three times the force. Now, I was thinking that part of the problem might have been that the vacuum blocks weren't turning on at the right time. By adding in a couple more sensors here, I should be able to turn them on as soon as the bomb goes through, and this seemed to help out a little bit. So, with this working for two stages here, I wanted to add on one more sensor and have this turn on the last bomb. This didn't really seem to have that noticeable of effect, but by pulling the bombs further apart and angling them up a bit, I found a really interesting discovery. As the bomb goes through the last vacuum block, I could see here it was actually slowing down a little bit. I think by having the vacuum block on, it's pulling it back into the mechanism, and that's what's causing it to slow down. Now, of course, with some different angles here, I'm able to pull up the bomb the last second, and this gets me going further than I've ever gone before, but I did want to implement that system to turn off the vacuum blocks at the right time. So you can see now, I got rid of all the vacuum blocks but the first one, and I'm putting them back by the first one. This is to make the whole mechanism a bit more compact here, and I thought that I could get some more interesting tests this way. Trying this out, though, I had a new problem. As the bomb pulled through, I could see it hit the last vacuum block, and from the top, you can really see it curve in and then hit that block. Now, the problem here is that as the bomb starts to deviate, it's going to get strongly attracted in that direction since it's now closer to the vacuum block, and that means that if I deviate at all, the bomb's gonna seriously start pulling off center. So I wanted to try adding on the vacuum blocks and pulling the bomb inside of the structure. Trying this out, it did pull it in, but the bomb was gonna get attracted to the ceiling, and as soon as it hit another half pipe, that caused it to explode. So I tried this same thing, both a flaming ball, and while it was working, I really wasn't that impressed. So what I wanted to try doing now was going back to my previous design here and seeing if I could just get the bomb to avoid the sides by moving the vacuums in and out. So by adding in a sensor here to turn off the vacuum blocks, I could see here everything seemed to be working fine right up until it got into that second stage. Now I pulled over the vacuum blocks slightly to make a bit more room, but this still seemed hidden to the side, so I had to pull it over a lot more. And while this was working with two sets here, I wanted to add on a third set to give even more power. And unfortunately, once I added this one, it was super common for the bomb to hit it one side or the other, and there was nothing I could do to really stop it from doing that. So I decided to build off of this machine and try my half pipe idea out again. This time, I wanted to try having no ceiling to it and just having the bottom rail. I was hoping having the bomb being less constrained was gonna help it to stop exploding, and after getting everything in place here, I copied the vacuum blocks on either side of the half pipe. Unfortunately, though, it seemed to explode almost immediately, but my first idea was to get rid of all the individual half pipes and replace it with one really long half pipe. Now, this seemed to be noticeably better when I was rolling it forward, but trying it out again here, it still seemed to explode almost immediately. And I could see in slow motion here, it appeared that the bomb was hitting into the vacuum blocks themselves. So what I did now is pulled them out a tiny bit from the half pipe to give a little bit more room. Once I did this, the bomb seemed to fly through here just fine, but I noticed it was going pretty slow. In fact, it was quite a bit worse than before. So my next idea was to slightly move in the vacuum blocks at the end here to get them as close as possible to the bomb. This seriously seemed to improve the amount of distance I got out of this, and I tried doing it again, but this time it was just too close and the bomb was ramming right into them. So to get the bombs closer, my next plan here was to shrink down the whole mechanism by a factor of two. This is going to mean that the vacuum blocks are 50% the distance from the bomb from before, but they have the same amount of power. This gives me a much better launch here, and already this seemed to improve things a lot. Now I added on some more vacuum blocks to the very end here, and I also tuned up some of the sensors just to make it go a bit further, and already this seemed to be a lot better, and I was pretty happy with how far these bombs are going. So with the launcher looking good, next 
Next, I needed a way to store the bombs, and for that, my first idea was using a grabber. This was gonna be super simple, and just by adding on some logs to the very end here, I'm able to put down a grabber, and on that, I could put down a bomb. Now, trying this out here, I could drop the bomb and then throw it off the edge, and that seemed to work out fine. So I added on a few more grabbers here, and also a few more bombs. Giving this a test, though, I noticed a problem. If I try releasing all the bombs at once, it will explode, which I guess is to be expected, but trying to launch off the second and third bombs always cause this to explode. I think the problem is that I'm releasing them too far back, and instead, I was gonna need a different way to load on the bombs. So you can see here, I built off to the side, and I put down a couple of spinning wheels on some logs. After that, I copied over these spinning wheels a lot, and I turned down their speed as well. This means that they move a lot slower, and I was hoping to use this as a conveyor belt. Now, I dropped a bomb in place here, and I wanted to see how it would do, but it seemed to just roll around here, and not really move on to any of the other wheels. So next here, I deleted a couple of the wheels, and I made space for these sticks. These allow me to move the bomb a bit more, but it seemed to just fall down and not really get me anywhere. Now, a better version of this, I realized, is just using these gears. If I put these next to each other, I should be able to move the bomb from one onto the other, but it didn't really seem to want to carry the bomb at all. Now, I shrunk down the bomb here, which helped a lot, and you can see I successfully managed to transfer it onto the other gear. The issue, though, is that the other half of the time, it would just fall down and not really get me anywhere. So lastly here, I added on a ton of pistons, and this was sort of a fish there mechanism. Instead of going up, though, this mechanism is purely for making bombs go forward. And you can see here, I added on an angled armor plate to the first piston. This didn't move up and down fine, so I copied it over to all the other pistons, and you could probably see by now what I'm trying to do. With this, I should be able to have the bomb roll from one of these pistons onto the other one, and by alternating which side of pistons I'm moving, I should be able to have the bomb continually go forward. Now, to prevent the bomb from falling out, I added on some paneling here, and it seemed to be okay, so I wanted to try adding on a bomb here and giving it a test. And already, it was pretty much working exactly as I'd want it to. The bomb was slowly going forward, and I should be able to drop a single bomb every time I want to. Now, to give you a more thorough test here, I added on more bombs, and you can see now I'm able to drop off one bomb every other time I move the pistons. That was great, and you can see now next I'm rotating this over and adding it on so it feeds the main half pipe. I could drop in a bomb here and shoot off the vacuums, and it seemed to be good. Sometimes it would explode, but most of the time it was okay, so I was pretty happy with the results there. Now, this feeder mechanism was very good, but I also wanted something here that was gonna allow me to store a lot more bombs in a magazine, and that's what I'm trying to do next here. This is sort of the same thing, except you see it's a lot taller, but unfortunately, it seemed to be a lot more glitchy as well, and the bombs would fling out from the sides and explode. The other issue with this design is that it's not really storing that many bombs at all, and it's pretty space inefficient. Now, before I started working on the next mechanism here, I got a little distracted, and you can see now what I'm doing is finishing up the barrel. I wanted to add some panels all around you here, and start getting the basic shape sculpted. So after copying over to the bottom of the sides here, it seemed to be fine, and with that, you can see now my next design for loading up bombs. And while it was working, it also was pretty glitchy, and I thought of a much better way of doing this. Now, I started out by building up a small platform here, and I put down a loose block on the bottom. After that, I built up a bit higher, and I pinned the block above it. After that, I put down a rope and winch here, and I put it on both sides of that block, and you can see now I'm able to pull it up and move it back down, and that should allow me to move up the bombs onto the feeder. Now, to hold in the bombs here, you can see I'm using a paneling piece, and I'm putting it all around here. After that, I turned it into the glass, just so it's a bit easier to see everything, and with that, it was time to start loading up some bombs. Now, this first bomb here seemed to work really well. I had no problems with it at all, so I put down three more bombs here, and with that, you can see it's able to move up and down the tube just fine. So I decided to extend out the glass, and I added on more bombs here, and with it on here, it seemed to be equally as good as before, so I made a little bit of an opening at the top of the glass, and I wanted a mechanism to push the bombs forward. Now, I made this pretty easily here using this wood panel, and with that, I was able to have the bombs always go forward here, and that should let them fall right onto the feeder. So, with this looking good, I moved it over in place here, and you can see now I'm able to have the bombs move up and fall right on the feeder. Now, next, I wanted to start working on the aesthetics here, and first, I wanted to conceal this mechanism and hide it in the handle. Now, after getting that all paneled up here, next you can see I got rid of one of the feeders, and let's just make the whole thing a bit more compact, because it was a little bit bigger than it needed to be. Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth on exactly what panels I put in place, but one major thing I want to talk about here was going to be the trigger and the trigger guard. And you can see I'm using some panels just to define a pretty rough shape. After that, it was time to work on the trigger, and for that, I put down a hinge, and I put down some ballast on that. And after bracing those together, and giving myself a bit more room here, it's able to move back and forth fine, but this isn't that realistic, and I needed some spray 
spring action on it. So next, I put in a suspension piece inside the gun, and I used a bracing piece to link this to the trigger. Now already, I could see pulling this back, it had a lot of spring force, and I lowered it a lot to make it a little bit easier to move. This seemed to help a lot here, and I can see the whole mechanism working now. And with all that, next, I wanted to add in a sensor here, and this is going to detect when I pull back the trigger. This seemed to work fine, and I was able to use this to shoot off a single bomb. And with that, I started trimming down the back of the gun here, and I also wanted to add on this little triangle looking piece as well. And you can see pretty easily here, I managed to panel the entire thing up. Now I went ahead here, made the barrel slightly smaller, and after that, I also made the top of it out of glass. This is to make it a lot easier to see what's going on with the whole mechanism, and with that, I thought this was looking pretty cool. Unfortunately though, it would still explode a lot, so I gave it a little bit more room to stop doing that, and with that, I also wanted to color this thing up. I decided to go with the gray color, because that seemed the most realistic, and with that, I colored up all of the non-glass panels. Now this gun was very close to testing, but there was one last thing I wanted to do, and that was full automation. Now what I'm doing is adding in a couple delay pieces, and as I pull the trigger, it's automatically moving the fish stare, which means that it's automatically going to feed in a bullet. And with one last delay piece, I was also able to have it pull up on the winch and load up another bomb. And testing this out now, it mostly seemed to work fine, so I rotated this up, and I wanted to see if it would still work. And the thing was, it mostly seemed to not work. Interestingly though, I found a solution was allowing the bomb to roll forward in the half pipe a lot further, and shooting it off once it gets up near the top of that roll. Now I thought a really easy solution to this would just be adding a couple of wooden blocks here and have these purposely space it out a bit more so the bomb sits right in the front. Now the bomb was very strangely rotating, but at the very least, this did seem to solve my problem and the bomb was able to shoot right out. Now I realized that the rotation was coming from the half pipe itself shaking, so what I did here is moved up the wood block a bit so it stops intersecting and this totally solved that problem. So with this thing in a pretty good state here, it was time to try shooting some villages. Now I want to try shooting the red tents over the distance here, so I moved the gun back, and I tried to get it roughly in the right position. This gun is surprisingly accurate at times, so I was hoping that I was going to go a good distance here. And shot one seemed to be okay, but it was a little bit short. Now, I moved the gun slightly further forward here, and I wanted to give it another test, and already I could see that this one was going a lot further. In fact, I managed to hit the very last tent here and do some pretty good damage. Now, I went back to the gun here, and wanted to try shooting off another bullet. This one seemed to go right in the middle, and overall, that was not that bad. Now, I just kept shooting this gun here, and you can see that the spread on it is pretty big. In fact, sometimes they're going quite a bit short, and sometimes they're going way too far. Overall, though, I was still pretty much hitting the target I wanted, so I was overall pretty happy with it. Now, the bombs were blowing up on me a lot, so what I wanted to try doing instead was shooting boulders. These, I figured, would be basically the exact same thing, except they're going to explode a bunch of rock fragments instead, which should make it a lot more manageable to shoot in the gun. Now, I guess I had underestimated just how heavy these boulders are, because they did not want to come out of the barrel. The vacuums really struggled to pull them out, and once they did, they didn't really go anywhere. So next up here, I wanted to try using ballasts. These are basically the same thing, except I'm able to adjust their mass, but since they're not circular, they're having a lot of trouble rolling into place here, and they weren't really gonna work. Now I searched for a good alternative here, and the best thing I could find was grenades. These things have a circular hitbox, and they seem to be just about the right mass. You can see I'm able to shoot it out of the barrel, and it doesn't seem to be that bad at all. So I copied these over completely, and after I did that, it was time to give it a test. Now my first few shots here were pretty varied, and a lot of the time it wasn't quite hitting the village. Once I ran out of grenades in my main feeder though, I started loading them up for my winch system, and overall it seemed to be pretty good. Occasionally they shoot out to the side, but when they did shoot, it seemed to be okay. They also seem to be getting caught in the barrel and not really going in the half pipe. I think that they're slightly smaller than the bombs, and they're having a bit of trouble falling in the same spaces. With enough trouble though, I was able to shoot all those out, and except for that, I told them all to detonate. I guess they also had a couple of grenades still stuck in my gun, so blew up the bottom of it, but overall, that wasn't that bad. Now, overall, there's definitely a lot of better ways to make a pistol here, and using the vacuum blocks is pretty inefficient, but I was glad I got them working here, and I thought I made a pretty funny railgun sort of like thing. So if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. If you like the video, make sure to like the video. If you have any other suggestions for what I should make, make sure to leave it down in the comments below, and otherwise, till next time.